thank you for coming today. Um, obviously, we have now got a new Chief Constable of North Yorkshire Police um, in Lisa Winwood. Uh, Lisa's been interim uh, Chief Constable uh, since April and uh, prior to that was Deputy Chief Constable here and then spent 14 years in Humberside, I think. Um, so um, we've had a very robust process. Um, we've, we've been a little bit innovative in it, but we've had some good feedback from people and in particular members of the public and people who attended um, the event that we had. Um, and so that was really good to see how candidates could um, answer questions from you know, members of the public, partners that we work with, uh, staff, officers uh, and the like. Um, so I'm really delighted um, that we've got Lisa in post now for the next five years. Thank you, Lisa. Thank you very much. So good morning, everybody. I'm Lisa Winwood. I am delighted, honoured, privileged, I think are the words I would use, uh, to be confirmed as the Chief Constable for North Yorkshire Police. Um, so I'm going to speak for just maybe five to ten minutes and then happy to take questions. And I suppose firstly just to tell you a little bit about myself and then about my priorities uh, to deliver a better service to the public in North Yorkshire. So I joined North Yorkshire Police 25 years ago as a special constable uh, in York. I had um, no idea that I wanted to be a police officer at that moment in time. Um, however, having joined the special constabulary, it became very clear to me very quickly that my vocation in life was to help people, to serve the public and to keep people safe. And North Yorkshire unfortunately weren't recruiting at the time um, and I was so committed to wanting to, to serve the public that I joined the force next door at Humberside uh, where I served for 14 years uh, right through from being a response officer, uh, community policing, I was a trained detective, uh, worked in a business change team, uh, so I did lots and lots of roles in Humberside for 14 years up to and including Chief Inspector. Uh, but I think my heart was still in North Yorkshire and I um, bought a home back in York and was commuting to Hull every day until North Yorkshire advertised for transferees and I transferred back to North Yorkshire uh, 10 years ago now uh, as a Chief Inspector and worked at York. I had the real privilege uh, to be the commander for the City of York for four years uh, before moving to more force level overarching roles uh, up at headquarters. Um, I attended the strategic command course in 2016 and was very fortunate that there were uh, roles for chief officers in North Yorkshire uh, when I came back from that course in 2016. Um, I never expected to find myself sitting here today uh, as the new chief constable of North Yorkshire and it's a real privilege uh, to be in that position. Um, and I truly want to ensure that we deliver the highest possible standard of service to those communities where I also live um, and work. So the priorities for the, the next five years and beyond. Um, we have a police and crime plan. Uh, that police and crime plan was, was written uh, in consultation with members of the communities which we serve. Uh, our staff were consulted, our key stakeholders were consulted. So when you read the plan, um, it's very apt that it spells the word care in its four priorities and I want to make sure that every time we have contact with the public that we serve that they feel they've received a caring service from North Yorkshire. So I wanted to talk a little bit about what those priorities are because I'm committed uh, to us delivering those priorities. So the C in our care plan stands for caring for the vulnerable. As you know we receive uh, hundreds of thousands of calls every year and we have contact with lots of members of the public who are indeed vulnerable and I want to make sure that our staff and officers have got the skills uh, to support those people, that we work in partnership with agencies who can deliver the best possible service to support those vulnerabilities but most of all to make sure that we prevent those people from coming to further harm. We also in our plan, uh, the A stands for ambitious collaboration uh, this is a multifaceted area of business because we collaborate not only with other police forces and we've got a major crime team with Cleveland Police, we collaborate on a number of areas with Yorkshire and the Humber forces um, and we've got a, a whole piece of work ongoing uh, with the North East region on cyber crime and domestic violence so some of those areas we can better use our assets together as a policing service. But not only that, we've got our blue light partners so uh, Fire and Rescue Service, which later this year will come under the governance of the Police and Crime Commissioner, and our Ambulance Service, we're already working in a tri-service agreement very closely 
because we often deal with the same people in our communities. Another area of collaboration, of course, is with our local partners. So here in North Yorkshire, we have very strong links with our safeguarding partners in both the County Council, District Councils and the City of York. And uh, we've had some fantastic results in terms of safeguarding and the quality and standards of the safeguarding that we provide to those communities through multi-agency working with the people that we come into contact with. So I want to build on those relationships and build on our community safety hubs out in those communities. The R of our plan uh, talks about reinforcing the front line. So if our officers and staff don't feel they have the support, the skills, the equipment, um, the looking after their well-being and welfare, they can't deliver a better service to the public. So we've uh, delivered a whole raft of work around uh, kit and equipment. Um, our operational mobile working kit is now out there on the streets and being used in anger. Uh, a body one video is being rolled out to certain teams in our communities and we've got a whole well-being programme uh, to look at how we better support our staff to deliver that better service and spend more time out in those communities. It's also uh, important in terms of reinforcing the front line that our neighbourhood policing, which is the bedrock of the community policing we serve here in, in North Yorkshire, remains and we build upon it. So some of you will have seen that we've had a recent neighbourhood policing survey. We want to listen to the things that people are saying about our neighbourhood policing model and also the rural crime survey that's taken place tells us a lot about how we can improve those services in those neighbourhoods and I want to build on and listen to what people are saying so that we can deliver a better service to our neighbourhoods. Finally, the E in our plan uh, talks about uh, enhancing our customer service. So we've heard a lot about our 101 and our force control room service. As you know, we've invested a huge amount um, of money in both people and equipment and facilities at our control room. Um, this is a national increasing demand. We're very fortunate that the public are so confident in, in the police service that they're willing to ring us about almost anything. And so our demand continues to go up. But we've invested, therefore, to answer those calls more expeditiously. At 999, I feel as though we're now delivering the service that I would expect uh, in faster call handling times for those emergencies. I still want to build and improve on our 101 performance so that people can get through to us when they need. But also, uh, the world is changing and people have lots of different means of contacting uh, people that they want to speak to. And here at North Yorkshire Police, I want to enhance our customer service by also providing some of those broader opportunities for people to contact us through technology. Um, our staff and officers are out there now with more technology, so we need to look at better ways in which we can um, extend the ways in which the public can contact us and feel like they're being delivered a, a better service. So other priorities amongst the police and crime plan I'm really um, focused on our efficiency inspection findings from last year. So we were given areas for improvement to improve our performance in our efficiency and that's why we've invested in a transformation programme. So our Transform 2020 programme has seen us working with a business partner that's been with us for a few weeks now and we're looking at how we make best use of our really valuable assets. So we know that budgets are demanding and we want to make sure that we use the assets that we've got in the most efficient and effective way. So our Transform 2020 programme will look at perhaps some of those systems and processes where we can deliver, them, deliver those back office services in a more automated way, which gives us the opportunity to continue to invest in our frontline services. I think finally, uh, before uh, questions, I would just like to say my, my commitment is to go out and listen to the members of our community. How does it feel to receive a service from North Yorkshire Police? And how can we act on that to deliver a better service to you? But also in doing that, how do we then support and equip our staff to deliver that better service to our communities through looking after their well-being and ensuring that we have the skills and the people in the right places at the right time to deliver that best possible service? I'm happy to take questions. Changes that might bring yes, so absolutely. So we went through a full, um, as you would expect in the public sector procurement process to find the right business partner uh, because it was really important to us, um, both culturally and the changes that we wanted to make, that we were both um, in tune, if you like, as, a, as an organisation and the business partner. So PricewaterhouseCooper 
um, of the organisation uh, that finally uh, came through the bidding process and um, they joined us five weeks ago now, um, came in and, and familiarised themselves with the organisation. Um, they have a lot of background experience in delivering uh, change in a policing environment and that's both in, in a more national setting but also in local policing. Uh, so they came with a real wealth of experience across the board in terms of policing change and ensuring that we deliver the most efficient um, means of service. So talking a little more about what work stream areas we're looking at, um, we're really invested in delivery of service of the front line. So, so the public touch and feel our service through their contact with us. But that can't happen without an awful lot of work going on in the background. There are lots of organisations uh, that are probably very similar where there's a huge amount of work that goes on in the background. There are a lot of uh, police staff who work for us that work very hard to ensure that our officers and staff can physically go out and deliver the best possible service. But we're not always as efficient as we could be in those services. So um, as an organisation, uh, we probably, to give you an example, we probably fill in an awful lot of forms and spreadsheets that could be automated, for example. And our business partner has got a lot of experience in what's the best way in which we can do that without losing um, the enhancement that that provides to other people in our organisation. So we don't want to throw the baby out of the bathwater. Uh, we want to make sure that we can um, cut out some of those bureaucratic elements of our business in the background that maybe have come from our history as a policing service, but ensure that we don't lose the valuable information and support that gives to our frontline service. So there's a lot of work we can do there. As you'll know from the national programmes, there's a huge amount of work going on with technology. So the world of technology moves on much faster than the public sector can ever keep up with it. And North Yorkshire Police is no different to that. We've invested heavily in our mobile working solution, in our body one video, but there's clearly more we can do uh, to enhance some of those um, contact points for the public as we've talked about. So you'll see other organisations and, and police forces have maybe got um, web chat or there's ways and means people can interact with us electronically if they want a transactional service rather than a, a people facing service and we need to develop those services in North Yorkshire through our technology developments and we think that PricewaterhouseCooper will be able to help us with some of their experience in those um, technology advances but do it in an efficient way because we could spend millions on technology but we will actually want to spend our, our valuable assets on frontline policing so we need to make sure that we were balanced in investing but in a way that still makes sure we're using our, our funding to deliver policing um, in the background. So there's some of the key areas that we want to look at in terms of our business model. I, 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 just, well, I just think it would be fair to say that um, you know we were given a, um, areas for improvement from the inspectorate around efficiency and we've yeah. known for some time that we are not as efficient to service as we should be and there is a lot of um, process that can be streamlined um, and um, bureaucracy that can be removed and it you know, people think it's just a question of taking out a few forms. It is a much more complicated process than that. Yeah. Um, and, you know, the people here in the organisation are, are doing the day business. They are delivering the service at the moment. And um, we don't have the, the capacity to do this major change programme ourselves because we need people to concentrate on doing the day job. Yeah. Uh, so we've brought in external resources to help us deliver the change whilst at the same time let people get on with the day job and I think it's really important that um, that we don't disrupt that too much um, although change is by its nature quite disruptive. Can, is, it, is it possible that that might lead to job losses in the, sort of the back office functions? So we are, we are looking at the moment at uh, how we um, bring together the, the back offices of the fire service and the police service together so we're looking across both services not just the police service um, uh, and there will be um, um, a programme going forward. We don't know what that will look like at the moment, um, but we need to make sure that we run those back office services as efficiently as possible because the money that it costs to run them, um, you know, we're here to deliver a service and we need to put as much money as we possibly can into the front line. Um, and if we can realise efficiencies from the back office, we will do. Sorry. 
Did you mean actually joining the fire service backroom along with police? So I've talked. So I've talked. I've talked for some time about uh, the fire service moving into HQ, into right. Alverton Court. So we want to see the fire service move into uh, into Alverton Court, and as, and that's the support functions largely. Mm -hmm. So it makes sense for those support functions to sit together um, and to uh, and to work together. So that's that's what we're doing. That's what we'll be doing, and that's part of what um, the change program is uh, is is here to do. I mean, the other area, and we've talked a lot about um, our back office systems, is is a place-based approach to our problem solving in our communities. So it builds on neighbourhood policing. Um, so we've talked a little bit about neighbourhood policing will remain the bedrock and we want to invest in that area and we've got a rural task force that works very closely with our neighbourhood policing team to support some of the rural isolation that's been reported in the survey. But there's also an opportunity for us to work uh, with local authorities and other partners and there's lots of charities out there in our communities that do fantastic work and we're all touching and supporting the same complex family needs in those communities. I think we could be much more efficient if we helped the longer term problem solving together with some of those complex issues in those communities whereas at the moment we often touch these people separately. So that's another key piece of work in that transformation programme. And, and that has knock-on impact, for example, for the control room, because we get a lot of calls coming in from, from other agencies, because the, very often it's the same people who need help. Um, and so we need to be able to find better ways to work with local authorities, with the fire service, with the ambulance service, with health, to try and make sure that we don't all uh, work with people in different ways, and it's not joined up at the moment, it's not as joined up as it could be. So we've got mental health nurses in the force control room that that's that's a start but it's 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 just a start